G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a buffer website for SEO in case you wanna start using buffer sites. Let's uh, jump into it. So as you can see, I've got this awesome, amazing diagram that I've created behind me, okay? So let me explain what is a buffer website, okay? So as you can see, you've got your site here, all right? Now, a buffer website is essentially protection between your website and the, uh, let's just say, maybe not recommended tactics that you'll be utilizing the buffer for, okay? So as you can see here, here's our money site, and then we have the buffer website in between taking all of that spam. So it's not going directly to our website. So if you want to effectively utilize a buffer website, this is how you go about it. And you would utilize it if you want to juice up your website, but, but protect it in the long run. So let's just say in this scenario, this is when, let me give you some scenarios of when you would start using a buffer site, okay? So let's just say you've launched a new website. You don't have the money for backlinks like all of us do starting out. What do you do? Well, you can utilize this strategy. So you can set up a buffer site and we'll run through some of those examples where you can get them and I'll show you how to do that shortly. But let me explain the buffer site. So you would hit that with those spammy, powerful, free links that you can get. You would hit that site. Now, what that site's going to do is you would make this contextually relevant to your money page, and then you can send those links across, okay? But what that buffer site will do is it'll protect you in case, or when Google eventually catches up to you and says, hey, what's going on here? It'll protect you for that. You're just going to have to delete this connection, all right? So that's effectively how you would utilize a buffer site. You would send all that spammy trash to the buffer, and then you would send that into your site. Why? Because you've powered it up and you're protecting it. Very important to remember, if you if you are using those cheaper backlinks, if you are using those uh, mass, like mass link builders, like your money robots, GSA, all of that, well, then you're gonna need a buffer. Don't ever send that type of stuff to your main page, okay? To your money site, have that protection in place. Now, I'm actually going to show you how to create a buffer site. I'm going to walk you through more so the platforms that you can utilize to create a, a website, a buffer website. So the first thing is obviously the Google sites. Now, guys, very easy to do. As you can see, here's a template I just clicked on. Now, how you can access the Google sites is literally just come over here to the grid and click sites, and basically it's going to take you into this. Now, all you would need to do is change this and adjust this and then launch it, okay? That's it. That's it. And then what you would want to do when you create your Buffer website, make it relevant. So let's just say you have, you know, you are a digital marketing agency or you're a plumber. You would want to have your Buffer website, again, being contextually relevant. So perhaps it's like how to repair pipes or the repair of pipe king, whatever it is, something that's quite relevant. So you keep it relevant, tie it all in. Don't just make this like this as an example. So if I was trying to send this across to my plumbing site, like there's pictures, it's obviously a florist. Update it all, change the content around, fix it all up, add in content about being a plumber, all of this, make it relevant because essentially this is now a tier one for you. You want to make it look as real as possible and you want to get as much juice as you possibly can for as long as you can until Google catches up to you because they will when you're doing these types of tactics that require a buffer site, trust me. So this is what you would want to do. You'd want to go in. Now, there's other things like Blogger. You can use Blogger to create, again, more buffer sites. It's pretty handy. Uh, I just think the days of Blogger are sort of gone. I personally don't utilize this tactic too often, to be completely frank. I, Thankfully, I'm in a position now where this is something that I don't really need to do. However, when I do, I rely on the Google Sites. I rely on the Google Sites more so than anything else. And then I'll smash that with all of my Money Robot and GSA links. You can also use the Power Pages from Microsoft. So Power Pages, it's just Microsoft's version of the, the sites. 
So these are the types of things that you can utilize for building out buffer pages. You can also utilize things like even a PBN can technically be classified as a, as a buffer site. So let's say you had your own website, you know, again, you're a plumber and you're like, okay, I have this other plumbing thing that I set up because I was going to do this other stuff. Perhaps it was on replacing taps or, you know, installing, doing bathroom remodeling. You can set up your PBN and that can be your buffer site. But no matter what, something that's very important to me, you always make it contextually relevant to send it into your site, okay? Because whilst Google will always place an importance on the whole link path, right? But if this to here is clean, then that's going to serve you a lot better than again, if you just are back to the example of the florist, if I was to do this up, it's a picture of a florist in there. It looks, it's got nothing to do with a plumber. Okay. You want to make sure that it's all, that it's all relevant. Like I said, you can utilize utilize cloud properties as well so like google stacks these types of things can be that just the google sites and then the stacks so everything else or all of the google files and everything like that all put together you can utilize that as well as a buffer site but predominantly if you're going to approach like approach it with this strategy it's to be fast and cheap you want it to be fast and cheap so you just want to throw up one of these types of sites you want to send all of the uh, powerful but spammy links to the buffer and then send it to your site. A couple of things to keep in mind. As soon as you notice that hit, just drop the buffer. Don't go in there and try and clean up the spam because eventually you'll get hit. So you can use the buffer for the first couple of months and then eventually Google might catch on. So and depending upon when they bring out a new update. So let's just say in the plumber scenario, you send this in, you're starting to do well, you're starting to rank for a few things, but all of a sudden you take a hit. <sighs> do you just restart removing this stuff or remove the buffer? I'd remove the buffer, personally. I'd remove the buffer. That's To me, that's an indication that it's done. And hopefully by then you've bought yourself enough time that you're actually able to build better links and, and more appropriate links. Now, to make the buffer seem a little bit more legitimate, you can sometimes get the odd good link into it, but I wouldn't waste my effort. No, honestly, I wouldn't do it. I would just send trash to this. Anything good goes to the site itself. So if you are doing your citations, you get the opportunity of a good guest post, send it to the site, not to the buffer. Some people like to make them seem legitimate by sending some good stuff, uh, but to me, like, you can't polish a turd. So that's how I look at a buffer site. I hope I've explained how to create a buffer website for SEO. And now you should be able to start using buffer sites for your SEO strategy on the cheap. This is a cheap, not a long-term strategy, but it's a great effective way to power up your site. You could do this a million times over to help boost up your site initially but then you would want to take it more seriously and move into the more traditional approach to SEO to ensure that you get great results. I hope this helped, guys. Cheers.